The kingdom of God does not benefit you physically until you have discovered it spiritually. In fact, your level of discovery in the spirit determines your fruit in the physical. So Jesus says that the first mystery that people didn't understand was the mystery of the coming kingdom. They kept waiting for a kingdom that had already come. When Jesus came, he's saying the time is fulfilled. Come on now. And the kingdom of God is at hand. So repent and believe the gospel. Praise the Lord, Shalom, and welcome to our Sunday Live here at the Kingdom Tabernacle where we preach strictly good news. I want to welcome you if you're watching this live on Sunday morning. God bless you. If you're watching this sometime later, God still bless you. Thank you for plugging in today to receive what the Lord is ready to give. I pray grace over you today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May God open your eyes to see in the Spirit what he will be sharing today. May he open your ears to hear in the spirit what he will be sharing today. But also may he open up your spirit to be able to connect and respond to what the Lord will be doing on today. This is a blessed season, the month of September, of course, where we are talking about walking in kingdom purposes. Walking in kingdom purposes. There's nothing that excites me like talking about purpose. Because I know purpose answers the why question. Why on earth am I here? So today, we want to thank the Lord for another opportunity to share. If you missed our Bible study on Wednesday, please go back and watch that video. Because there, we started to give an introduction to what this uh, month is going to be about. Especially as we talk about kingdom purposes. Walking in kingdom purposes. But before I go any further, I want us to take a minute or two just to lift up our spirits and pray in the Holy Ghost. And allow the Lord to take over, even as we prepare the word for you today. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift you up. We glorify you. We magnify you. You are God alone. And there is none beside thee. You are high and you are lifted up. And we praise you on today. The Bible is clear. I will praise the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be on my lips. We praise you, Lord, for what you have done, but we also worship you for who you are. In this month of September, show yourself strong on our behalf, but more than anything else, lead us into our purposes in you in the name of Jesus. How great is our God! Great and mighty is our God. High and lifted up is our God. Liko sente le mushada. He sits on high, but he looks down low. Manto tiku kali ande ha, and he cares about the affairs of men. Lanto sete le busha dia de. Our God is the righteous judge. Kia do subili ada ha. He will judge circumstances on our behalf in the name of Jesus. Father, we praise you and we exalt you. Hallelujah in Jesus' mighty name. Today I need you to say these words after me because these are declarations of purpose. These are our declarations of purpose. Before we even learn how to walk in them, let's pray according to the prayers of purpose. Will you pray with me? Say, in the name of Jesus, I will walk in kingdom purposes in the name of Jesus. Pray again. Say, I will walk in kingdom purposes in the name of Jesus. Nothing will stop me from walking in kingdom purposes. I submit my life to walking in kingdom purposes say it again i submit my life to walk in kingdom purposes in the name of jesus the lord will lead me into his purposes for my life in the name of jesus he will cause me to discover my purposes in him in the name of jesus i will not waste my life but i will gain my life by walking in the purposes of god 
in Jesus name decree and declare with me say I speak over my family it will be a family of purpose I speak over my relationships there will be relationships of purpose I speak over my businesses there will be businesses of purpose I speak over my body it will be a body for the purposes of God I speak over my spirit it will be a spirit used for the purposes of God come on decree say in the name of Jesus everything that the Lord has for me according to purpose I receive it now in the name of Jesus I receive wisdom for kingdom purposes I receive knowledge for kingdom purposes I receive revelation for kingdom purposes I receive friends for kingdom purposes I receive relations for kingdom purposes I receive finance for kingdom purposes whatever the Lord has for me for the purposes of God in this season I connect to it in Jesus mighty name my eyes will see purpose my ears will hear purpose my spirit will connect to purpose in the name of Jesus now pray with me say in the name of Jesus I cut myself off come on say it I cut myself off any associations that are not of purpose I refuse to be distracted I refuse to be derailed I refuse to be confused in the name of Jesus in this season I connect to purpose drivers I connect to purpose drivers come on talk to me say I connect to purpose drivers people who will drive me into my place of purpose in the mighty name of Jesus the devil will not be able to stop me on this road of purpose in Jesus mighty name come on pray with me say this is my season to manifest the purposes of God in my generation this is my season to manifest my spiritual gifting in the name of Jesus this is my season to manifest the offices that God is blessing me in in the spirit in Jesus mighty name this is my season to manifest in ministry service in the name of Jesus pray with me say I will serve the Lord I will serve the Lord with everything I am I will serve the Lord with everything I have say it one more time I will serve the Lord with everything I am and I will serve the Lord with everything I have in the mighty name of Jesus in this season I walk in purpose I walk in purpose pray in the Holy Ghost for a minute come on hallelujah 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 pray with me say i connect to kingdom purposes in this season in jesus mighty name i was born for purpose i was born for purpose i was born for purpose so i will leave for purpose i will leave for purpose in the mighty name of jesus begin to praise him and lift him up begin to thank him begin to magnify him for he is good and he is greatly to be praised right in your house yes you can clap your hands right at home you can celebrate God is delivering his omnipresence and turning it into his Shekinah glory in your life to deliver his purposes in your life clap those hands I said something I said God is bringing down his presence into your house so that that presence can deliver his purposes in your life in the mighty name of Jesus he will lead your way he will guide your way he will speak to you in a language you understand you will not be on your own any longer the Lord says to you I lead you and I guide you into the purposes that are preordained for you celebrate him today in Jesus mighty name God we give you praise <clears throat> 
God, we give you glory. Hallelujah. God, we celebrate your purposes. We celebrate it. God says, what I began, I will also accomplish. God said, what I began, I will also accomplish. The purposes I begin, I also accomplish them, says the Lord. Yes, yes, if he began it, he says, I will finish it. I will accomplish it by Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Glory to God. May you be a man of purpose. May you be a woman of purpose. In Jesus' name, let the heaven celebrate you because you're walking by purpose. Yes, yes, I said, let the heaven celebrate you because you are walking by purpose in Jesus' mighty name. I see three minutes on the clock. Come on, clap. Give him glory, give him glory, give him glory. Tell him I celebrate your purpose. Thank you for choosing me to walk in your purposes. Celebrate him. Come on. He would have anointed somebody else. He would have used somebody else. <clears throat> he would have ministered through somebody else. But thank him. Thank him that it is you that he chose. Thank you for making me an apostle. Thank you for opening up the nations for me. Thank you, God, for the opportunity to represent you as heaven's ambassador on the earth. Thank you. Thank you for the wisdom that you have given me. Thank you for the knowledge that you have given me. Thank you, Lord, for the spiritual understanding that you have given me. Webale, 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 webale. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. You could have chosen somebody here. Who am I among men? Who am I among Ugandans? Who am I that you choose me for such an awesome responsibility? Somebody thank him, thank him. Thank you for the gift of prophecy. Thank you, Lord, for the apostle's mantle. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of teaching. Thank you for the grace to pastor. Thank you, God, for walking in your purposes. In Jesus' mighty name. I release you now. I release you now. I, I stretch my hand over you. And I release you now into kingdom purposes. I stretch my hand over you now. Kingdom purposes. I stretch my hand over you now. And I release you into kingdom purposes ah, yeah, yeah, da, da, da. come on come on connect connect i release you into kingdom purposes i release you into heavenly callings yes 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 i release you into heavenly callings i release you into supernatural ability to represent god ah, ah, i release you mantolo into this awesome opportunity makia the day called serving the lord Mando Zitebele, you will serve the Lord in your generation. In Jesus' mighty name. Somebody give him praise and give him glory. Hallelujah. Psalm 113 is the verse we shall read just to praise him before we get into the word today. Psalm 100. <clears throat> I feel the Holy Ghost in here already. I said, I sense the Holy Ghost here already. Likata la prudus in tele prikaz in tele adede. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let tele prudus in tele kazide behe. Psalm 113 says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise all ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Verse number two says, Canto zubele, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. From this time forth, and forevermore verse number three he says from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same the lord's name is to be praised verse number four the lord is high above all nations and his glory is above the heavens verse number five he says who is like unto the lord our god who dwelleth on high i love verse number six he says who humbleth himself to be all the things that are in heaven and in the earth. Look at verse number 7. He says, He raises up the poor. Come on, out of the dust. And He lifteth up the needy. Out of the dunghill. He doesn't stop there. Verse 8. He says, That they, that He may set Him with the princess. Are you ready to sit with the princess? That He will set Him with the princess, even with the princess of His people. Verse 9, he says, he makes the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children. Praise ye the Lord. The verse I want to pull out there is that the Lord is about to raise you. 
He will raise you from the dung hill. He will raise you from the place that people had put him. He will raise you. You see, when I read this, I remember Joseph. Joseph was sold as a slave. But before that, he was thrown into a pit. I had Ezekiel, but God raised him from the pit until he sat him in the palace with the princes of the people of the land. I pray for those who have been ignored. I pray for those who people said, can anything good come out of you? I pray for those where men had no expectation on you. But I pray that the Lord will raise you. May the Lord raise you from your current predicament. May the Lord raise you from your current standard. May the Lord raise you from where people had put you. May the Lord raise you from where society had put you. And may he raise you not just to the ordinary. May he raise you to the princes of your people. In the name of Jesus. You will sit on tables that were reserved. I said you will sit on reserved seats. You will sit on reserved tables. There will be an entourage waiting for your arrival. Because when God begins to walk through you, the nations will celebrate what you carry. That's why we are talking kingdom purpose. <clears throat> Whenever God begins to work his purposes in and through you, I'm telling you, those that were rejected become accepted. Those that were ignored now are being invited. Why? Because it's not me that they are looking at, but the God in me, the gift that I carry, the thing in me that no one, no one else is working in. So I pray grace over you in this season. As you learn and walk in kingdom purposes, may you be raised from the dust. May he raise you from the dung hill. And may he lift you up in the name of Jesus. And may he sit you with the princes of your people. I'm talking about ambassadorial status. I'm talking about VIP status. I'm talking about diplomat status. That God will do a work in you that will shock your relatives. May God do a work in you that will shock your friends. May God do a work in you that can only be God. I'm telling you, your name might be Mary. But may God turn it into the mother of the light of the world. In Jesus' mighty name, somebody celebrate God. I sense a prophetic anointing here. Celebrate God. Celebrate God. Celebrate God. Celebrate God. Come on, celebrate God. Celebrate God. He's about to do the incredible in your life. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. I sense an anointing. Listen, you that is plugging in, I speak to you now. May your purpose in the kingdom of God change your story mm. let me say that again may your purpose in the kingdom of God change your story yeah, 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 yeah. your story won't change by finance your story won't change because you have certain contacts but I'm telling you when God begins to work through you your story will change. they knew you as a woman with six husbands now they will know you as an evangelist, the first evangelist Samaritan woman. Matale I don't know what they called you. Maybe they called you Mary the prostitute. Listen, when God's purposes begin to work in you, I'm telling you, He changes your story. Now you'll be the Mary, the first one to see the risen Lord. Kitu la sombra adega. I pray for you. May the purposes of the kingdom change your story. Your name was Peter, a fisherman. Now you're Peter the Apostle. May the kingdom purposes change your name and change your story. You were a Jacob, a liar and a cheat. But God says, I will call you Israel. Yes, I will call, I will call you Israel. Because you will give birth to nations in Jesus' mighty name. Your name was Saul, persecutor of the church. But when purpose meets a man, and a man avails himself for the purposes of God, his name has to change. And his story has to, I know what I'm talking about. I've seen it in my life. I prophesy it over your life. May the purposes of God in you change your story. May it change your story. Malika Zinimaha. Your family used never to call you for Makia Daze because you're just anybody. But now when your story begins to change, your family meeting, there's no family meeting without your presence. 
They will say, let us call on so and so because they have the word for the season. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. He changes your story because now you're a carrier of kingdom purposes. I have to say this before I even preach. To represent God is such an honor. To represent God is such an honor. <clears throat> purpose is not a duty. Purpose is in fact an opportunity. Never look at kingdom purpose as this big, big duty that the Lord is putting upon me. Serving the Lord is not a duty. Serving the Lord is an awesome responsibility. It is a divine privilege. The God who could use donkeys chooses to use men. I pray for you now that the Lord will not have to look for people to use when you're still alive. Mm. May God not have to look for people when you're still alive. May you always be that name on the mind of God. When he wants to do great exploits, you, let your name come up. He says, have you considered my servant Job? Ayadeka. So the name of Job was on the mind of God. He even boasted before the devil. And he said, have you considered my servant Job? I'm telling you, God's, God will have your name on his mind. When he wants to change Africa, he'll say, have you considered? When he wants to change your family, he'll say, have you considered? When he wants to change the nations around you, you say, have you considered? May your name be changed, hey castle, and may it be on the mind of God whenever he wants to do something supernatural. The Bible says in the day when men forgot about God, the Bible says clearly, but then there was a man called Noah. Hmm. And the Bible says, and Noah found grace in the sight of God. I'm telling you, if it means you being the only remnant, so when the world is falling apart, I'm telling you, you will be the knower of your family. You will be the knower of your generation. God will say, but there, then Joshua received grace. Put your name there, come on. And Joshua received grace in the sight of God. I said, put your name there. But Joshua received grace in the sight of God. I'm telling you, this season of kingdom purpose, is going to pull out men who thought they were nobody. And God will usher them into becoming a somebody. You were not born to be a statistic. You are not just born to be first, second, or third born. You are not born just to be a wife or a mother. No, you were born to display the very purposes of the kingdom of God. You were born so that the kingdom doesn't have to use anybody. You were born so that the kingdom can celebrate your existence. I'm telling you, there are some men whose birth is celebrated. It is one thing for your birthday to be celebrated by men. It's another when your birthday is a public holiday in the heavens. Am I talking to two people? The angels begin to celebrate your day of birth because in your birth came the fulfillment of divine purposes. I pray for somebody plugging in today. In the name of God, why am I talking like this? And we have a someone to preach. Watch this. The Lord says, from today, Matazika de Zubia, they are. From today, you're going to measure up to your real essence. You're going to measure up to the thing that God created you for, which is your purpose. Your value is increasing. Your esteem is increasing. The revelation of who you are is increasing. No longer will you walk like an average person. No longer will you walk as one of them. No, now there will be a special place in your spirit. An understanding, a recognition of who you are as you are viewed by God. I pray for you in the name of... Stop walking with your back bent. Stop walking with your shoulders slouched. Stop walking like the world is troubling you. Square your shoulders, stand tall. This is the season for you. To be introduced on the stage of the kingdom. Maya. Oh, God help somebody today. I said it, let me say it again. This is your season to be introduced on the stage of the kingdom. Mama, mama. I will say it one more time. This is your season to be introduced on the stage of the kingdom. Makasubeliadea. You know, the book of Acts has many names. But in every season, there was a name that was introduced. <laughs> I thought you heard what I said. In every season, there was a name that was introduced. 
Before Paul came, the name was Peter. And Peter took up many chapters in the book of Acts until it was time for Saul to be introduced. I pray for you. May this be the season for your introduction on the stage of the kingdom. I see a Bible. Well, I see, a, I see books now being written. And your chapter has come up. I see that your chapter has come up. And it will read something like this. And in the day, the ninth month of the 21st year of the 21st century, came a man called Joshua. You, you, you better put your name there. Masatebe. And in that year, grace was found on this man. Oh God. Grace was found on this man to display the praises of him who called him out of darkness into God's marvelous light. In the day of his purpose, this man, Marcaso de Hadeha, was the reason for the establishment and the propagation of the kingdom of God in his generation. And thousands came to the knowledge of their purposes through this man. Hundreds came to commit themselves to serve the Lord and his agenda. This man was born for this day. I release you into your day in Jesus' mighty name. I said, I release you into your day in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say glory to God. Clap your hands where you are. Celebrate Jesus. Come on. I said, celebrate Jesus. Listen, when we are beginning a month, I know some of you are waiting for the teaching. I have it here. But when we start a month, I usually want to start prophetic and also end it prophetically. That's why I'm taking a few more minutes just to prophesy over your spirit. Because I understand that purpose is the reason for existence. Okay, purpose is the reason for existence. So what I'm saying is, you discover the real you in this season. You discover what God really meant when he made you. That word purpose answers the why question. Why am I here? Your existence is even not a byproduct of your father and your mother biologically. They don't know who they are going to give birth to, but God does. Your existence is because of the purposes of God that must prevail through you. So I pray that you will step into not just a discovery of purpose, but a discovery of self. Wow. I said you, you step not just in a discovery of purpose, but into a discovery of self. You discover the real you in this season in Jesus mighty name celebrate him again one more time oh this is what Paul said in in the book of Philippians let's go to the book of Philippians and then I will teach today welcome this is the kingdom tabernacle if you've not subscribed already please take some time and subscribe glory to God in chapter number three Glory to God of the book of Philippians. In verse number 12, he says, Not as though I had already attained, neither were already perfect. Okay? But I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I'm apprehended of Christ Jesus. Let me explain that for a bit. Paul is writing to the church of Philippi and he's telling them, I have grown to the place where I understand I might still have some imperfections. I might still have some fights. And we see it later where he talks about the flesh versus the spirit. He says, when I look at myself, I recognize that maybe I'm a work in progress. I recognize that there are some things that must change. So he says, it's not as though I had already attained. There are visions that have not yet come to pass. There are hopes that have not yet come to pass. There are things I want for myself that I have not yet recognized them coming. There are things I know Jesus wants for me that I also know I have not yet attained. He says, not as though I had already attained. And then he says, either we're already perfect. 
Meaning that I understand the state of perfection. I understand who God wants me to be, but I'm not there yet, okay? Either we're already perfect. So what I'm saying next is not because I sense perfection. It's because I strive towards perfection. Did you hear me? Then he says, however, regardless of what I have not attained and regardless of my state of imperfection, this is what I do. I follow after. Okay? Another version will say, I press. In fact, the press will come in the next verse. Don't worry. Let's keep going. He says, I follow after. What am I following after? If that, I may get a hold of. Okay? I may apprehend that for which. Okay? That I may apprehend. Verse number 13. I may apprehend that for which. Are you there? I may apprehend, verse 12, that for which I am also apprehended of Christ Jesus. If you see those words apprehend, it's talking about a holding. It's saying that whenever a man comes into the kingdom of God, he is arrested by Christ. Okay? He is apprehended by Christ. But to be apprehended of Christ Jesus is really a statement of purpose. Watch this now. So Paul is saying that I want to get a hold of that for which I was held. Are you there? That I want to live for the purpose for which I was apprehended of Christ. So to walk in the kingdom purposes is not because you think you have attained a certain level. It's not because you think you are perfect. It's not because of your ability. It's because of his purposes. It's not because of your ability. It's because of his purposes. So every man that is born into the kingdom is apprehended. They are arrested for a cause. And the best way you can live life is to live for the reason for which you were arrested. For example, if God has a prophetic mantle over you, you are then apprehended for the prophetic oh i thought you heard what i said you are arrested for the prophetic you are held for the prophetic so paul says i will also get a hold of the prophetic because i was apprehended for the prophetic in another way he's saying i will follow after purpose even though i am pursuing perfection and great attainment verse number 13 he then continues to say in verse 13, Brethren, <clears throat> I don't count myself to have apprehended or gotten a hold of, but this is one thing I do. And everyone has to listen to this. <clears throat> I forget those things which are behind. And I reach forth unto those things which are before. You cannot walk in the purposes of God holding on to your past. Today, I deliver you from your past. I said, I deliver you from your past. Paul's past was called Saul. He had to let go of Saul if he's going to walk as Paul. Forgetting those things which are behind. Forget failure. Forget inability. Forget what people say about you. One of the reasons people never walk in purpose is there's too much that has been spoken over them. Let me tell you. If I was to live by my past, I would never preach another sermon. But Paul reminds us that forget the past if you're going to walk in purpose. Let me say that again. Forget the past if you're going to walk in purpose. So I forget the things which are behind. And I reach forth unto those things which are before. I understand that a reaching forth is a deliberate move of a man. You have to deliberately decide that I'm going for purpose. Purpose doesn't come to you. You reach out to purpose. You, 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 you stretch out to purpose. You decide that the purposes of God are going to become my new attainment goals. Hallelujah, somebody. So he's saying that we reach forth unto those things which are before. Verse 14. Which are these things that are before us? He says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. 
There's a high calling for each one of you. I said there is a high calling for each one of you. I said there is a high calling for each one of you. And there is a prize for that high calling. <laughs> There's a reward for that high calling. So in this season as we teach and also practice walking into the high calling of God, I pray for you that God will cause you to forget anything else and decide to walk for purpose. Somebody say that with me. I decide to walk in kingdom purposes. <laughs> say it again. I decide to walk in kingdom purposes. Praise the Lord, somebody. I have a few minutes. Let me teach a few things here. Now, when we talk about walking in kingdom purposes, check out Matthew chapter number 11. Check out Matthew chapter number 11. I'm telling you, your uniqueness, your distinction is going to come because you've decided to walk in kingdom purposes. Matthew chapter number 11. In Uganda, we call it Matayo. Okay, I don't know how you call it in your country. This is Matayo. Matthew chapter number 11. Let's go there. It's a story about Jesus talking and asking men about John the Baptist. Okay? And the reason I'm going here is because I want you to understand that walking in purpose or walking in kingdom purposes is defined by three things which I will unpack today and see how much more the Lord will allow us to share. Understand that I didn't call this series Walking in Purpose. I call it walking in kingdom purposes because I know that that word kingdom is what defines the purposes. Okay. Yeah. We are not talking about walking in purposes, generic. We are talking about walking in kingdom purposes. So it is the kingdom that is defining the purposes. It's not the purposes defining the kingdom. It's the kingdom defining the purposes. How can I say this? Your life is defined by what you subscribe to. Okay? Your life is defined by what you subscribe to. And many people miss purpose because they have missed kingdom. Mm. And many times we think we are walking in purpose. But if you're not walking in kingdom, then you're actually not walking in purpose. Yeah. So it is a definition that is coming from the entity called kingdom. And then kingdom begins to define purposes. Did you know that all of a believer's life is supposed to be defined by the kingdom? For example, who should I marry? Well, who you marry must be defined by kingdom. Okay, what job should I do? It should be defined by kingdom. Okay, what friends can I have? It's supposed to be defined by kingdom. Okay, uh, what will I do in life? It's supposed to be defined by kingdom. This is the problem. The problem is we engage in activities and then we bring the kingdom to help us in activities that the kingdom hasn't defined. So, here you are. You did your own business. Alright? Now, you want to bring the kingdom to bless a business that the kingdom didn't start in the first place. True success in the kingdom begins when it is the kingdom that started what you were engaging in. Are you there? So, this season, we're not talking about walking in purposes. Because there are too many purposes. Okay? Feeding the poor may be a purpose. There are people who just feel... That, you know what, I want to help the poor. But until it is the kingdom defining what you are doing, what you are doing may be good to man, but it will not be good for the kingdom of God or will not get a reward in the sense of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Some man once said that there will be so many good people in hell. I almost fought that statement until I thought about it. Because goodness doesn't take you to heaven. Okay? It is only being born again and entering the kingdom of God that opens up the door for you to step into heaven. So we want to define, you have to stop Hika Senemaha, engaging in all purposes and begin to engage in kingdom purposes. Relationships that you build that are outside of kingdom only help you and they end with you. But the kingdom doesn't, doesn't benefit. So you have to decide whether you want to hang out with everybody or whether with the few years you have, you want to focus on making kingdom relations. Some of us get headache over things that, you know, are not even in kingdom. So quickly understand that you're on kingdom time. Quickly understand that you're under kingdom purposes. Quickly understand that you're supposed to be a reflection of the kingdom. And then decide that for the rest of my life, whatever I do must be found 
or defined by the kingdom of God. That was a life lesson that I hope you can appreciate. So when we talk about walking in kingdom purposes, number one, you must understand it has to be kingdom first. Write it down. Write it down. It has to be kingdom first. Write it down. It has to be kingdom first. When you miss kingdom, you miss its purposes. When the Lord led me to begin to preach about the kingdom purposes, what I didn't understand was that <laughs> men are missing purpose because they haven't understood kingdom. Any church that teaches purpose but doesn't teach kingdom will lead you into religious festivals. It will lead you into religious activities. It will lead you into stuff that does not make a contribution to the kingdom. And I'm telling you, there is nothing as frustrating as thinking you're serving God and you're not. There is nothing as frustrating as pouring out your resources in things that are not advancing the kingdom of God. So today we are not just learning about how to walk in purposes. We are in fact beginning to engage first of all in the understanding of the kingdom. So the Lord allowed me to break this into three. Number one, the first thing you must understand about walking in kingdom purposes is number one, this is a walk into kingdom realities. Number two, this is a walk into kingdom agenda. And number three, this is a walk into kingdom times. If you've been following us for a season, you'll realize those are words that we use every day. But yet, look at the significance of this. That the purposes we say we are going to walk in are defined in these three areas. Number one, it is a walk. It has to be a walk into kingdom realities. Number two, it has to be a walk by the kingdom agenda. And number three, it has to be a walk by kingdom times. Don't worry about these phrases. I will explain them to you so that you connect to them. But first, let's read a scripture in Matthew 11. And I'll show you something here. Are you there, Matthew 11? Give me that scripture. Take me to verse number 7, for example. And we'll go all the way to 12. Let's read a, a little faster here. Now, in, in, in uh, Matthew 11, 7, Jesus and Jesus, as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John. So Jesus is talking about John. And he said, when you went out unto the, uh, what's it? When you went out into the wilderness, because remember, John was a man of the wilderness. What did you go to the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with wind? Verse 8. But what went ye out to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. Verse 9. <clears throat> but what went ye out to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. Verse 10. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Of course, you know that John was the one sent to prepare the way for Jesus. Now take me back. Let me prophesy. Because I don't want to be in a hurry. I will always have time to explain scripture. But let me also prophesy. Take me back to verse uh, number 7. Now listen. When the Bible, look at me here. When the Bible begins to talk about John and Jesus is defining John, he says, people always went out to see John. And the question is, what did you go to see? The first prophetic word I want to lay over your spirit is that men are coming to see you. Mm -hmm. Now you missed it. Let me try that again. Just as men went out to see John, men are going to come out to see you. But we are about to realize that men don't come to see an individual as much as they come to see the purposes that that individual represents. Whoa. So the kingdom of God puts purposes on your life and the purposes it puts on you become the magnet that brings people into your life. You realize John didn't advertise himself. His purposes advertised him. You realize John didn't say, come and follow me. In fact, 
Whenever men came to John, John would say, you hypocrites, who has warned you about the day that is coming? <laughs> so it, it seems as if men just gravitated towards John because John had a purpose in his life. The day for you walking alone is over. <laughs> the day for you being lonely is over. The day for you trying to advertise yourself is over. Listen, your purposes will advertise you for the sake of the kingdom of God. And this is where it begins. It begins at the place where the kingdom has something to do in your life. I will go there if time allows. So in verse number 7, he says, So when you went to see John, what did you go to see? First of all, he said, when you went to the wilderness, this, this amazes me. John was not in the city. John was in the wilderness. But people would leave the city and go to the wilderness because the purpose, the man of the purpose was not in the city. The man of the purpose was in the wilderness. Your geographical location is not what determines. What determines it is the purpose in you. I'm telling you. The, the, the South Americans will look for the South Africans. The East Africans will be on market in Russia. You didn't hear me. It's not about where you're located. It's about the assignment and the purpose of you. And I pray for somebody watching here today. May there be people that come even in your wilderness. Even in those places that you think people don't visit. I'm telling you. They will come to where you are. Because of the purpose of God over your life. Somebody say praise the Lord. So what did you go out to see in the wilderness? A reed shaken with wind. Meaning that, of course the reed shaken with wind. I don't want to go into too much detail. But this is talking about doctrine. It's really talking about doctrine. If you see, uh, Paul says that, uh, you know, don't be like children tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. You understand? So this is really talking about doctrine. Did you go to hear a new doctrine when you went to the wilderness? Look at verse number 8. He says, when you went, let's run. I have too much on my spirit. Did you go to see a man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. Because for John, he, he, he dressed in, uh, what did he dress in? In hides and skins and he was eating honey and locusts. So he says, when you went, you really didn't even look. You were not looking for a king. Because kings are not in the wilderness. And kings don't wear the kind of clothes that John was, was wearing. And you're about to see why he brought that scripture into this context. But what I can prophesy, are you ready? Is this, it's coming to you live here at the tabernacle. Watch this. That the Lord will cause men to come to you regardless. You didn't hear me. Regardless of what you're dressed in. Regardless of your clothing. Re regardless of your appearance. Because for John, he didn't wear king's clothes. But yet, kings came to his rising. Oh, unless you didn't read the story where King Herod came and the daughter, uh, he came along with this woman who was somebody's wife. But kings came to the rising of John the Baptist. But yet his clothes were normal. Verse 10. I have to run here. Verse 10 he says, For this is he of whom it is written, watch this now, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. So the only reason men went to John is because John had the purpose of being the messenger sent before Jesus to prepare the way for Jesus. So John had one purpose in life. And for all of you, I can say it boldly and proudly, there is one great purpose over your life. So there will be many purposes you serve, but there will also be one great purpose for which you were born. Let me say that again. Maybe you'll heal the sick. Maybe you'll preach the gospel. Maybe you'll do all of these things. But there will be one great purpose that the heavens will write about or the heavens have recorded about your life. And for the 90 years that you'll be alive, it will be defined by this one great purpose. So you heal the sick because of this one great purpose. You know what Jesus' purpose was? First John, get me the scripture. He says, and for this purpose... The Son of Man was made manifest that he might destroy the power of the devil. Hallelujah, somebody. So Jesus healed the sick. Jesus raised the dead. Jesus multiplied bread. There is a lot that Jesus did. Jesus turned water into wine. But 1 John chapter number 3 and verse number 8 gives us this thing. 
He says, he that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. But for this purpose, not this purpose says, but for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he may destroy the works of the devil. And sin was the major work of the devil. So he destroyed sin. He destroyed any other work. So among the works was sin. And out of sin came sickness, came, uh, talk to me, demon possession. All the things, death, all the things that the miracles Jesus performed was because of a devil that had to be defeated. Praise the Lord, somebody. So in the heavens, they are not recording all these, you know, multiply bread and do all of these things. There's one major purpose for which Jesus was sent. And that is to destroy the power of the devil. Now you that is watching me here today, you have one great awesome. I wish somebody could connect with me. I said you have one major purpose for which you were born. In our Bible study, we said there are many purposes. Today I'm telling you that those purposes are in fact fruit of one major purpose. Apostle, how will I know that purpose? That's what we are walking into. That is what we are walking into. But I can promise you, they will remember you in the heavens for one great purpose. Aye, 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 I can hear you. Noah's purpose was to build the ark, full stop. Abraham's purpose was to be the father of faith, full stop. Talk, tell me the person, I'll tell you their major purpose. Hallelujah, somebody. Eli had to prepare Samuel, full stop. There are people that God places for one major purpose. John's purpose was to be the messenger that prepares the way. That's why after Jesus came, John had to die. And even though John was the cousin of Jesus, he didn't raise him after he died because his assignment was over. And I can decree and declare you are still alive because that purpose has not yet been fulfilled. And you will not die. Hey, you will not die until that great purpose is manifested. Some of you, I don't know. I, 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 so, keda, milo, so. Some of you have no idea that purpose that is over your life. Some of you were born to lead. Hey, uh, sikada, uh, that through you there will be a revival that will change a nation. Did you hear me? So there are many services you're running. But then there will be one mechaseda. There will be a service among services that will bring a revival that will change the entire trajectory of churches in the body of Christ. And you were born for that one cause. Some of you, your birth is so that there is one disciple. I don't know who I'm talking to here. There is one man, for example, Cornelius. We don't know about a lot about Cornelius but we know that he helped in the conversion of Paul who would then bring about the mystery of Christ to the Gentiles so yes among many things was born for this one thing to bring the meaning of the faith to Paul you were born for one major function but listen that major purpose is going to bring to pass many other purposes so take me to my John he says in verse 10 Ah, like I, say, I hope you're picking something here and I'm about to show you in service here. In verse 10, Matthew chapter number 11, he continues and says, come on now. Verse number 10, he, this is what he says. He says, for this is he of whom it is written, behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare the way before thee. Now look at verse number 11. I need somebody to shout. In verse 11 it says, Verily I say unto you. Now we have celebrated John. Are you there? No, 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 no. no. Verse 11, yes. 11, yes. Verily I say unto you. Matthew 11, 11. Among them that are born of women. Are you saying this? So this is talking about born for a purpose. Are you there? So among them that are born of women. There has not risen <laughs> a greater than John the Baptist. So, talk, talk to me about anybody born of women. You will see that he's talking about everybody before John. Everyone is born of a woman. But he says there has not risen a greater than John the Baptist. I want to go to the next part, but let me prophesy. <laughs> it shall be written of you, Mahasu. 
among them that are born in Uganda, mm, among them that are born in your family, there has not risen a greater than you. You see, when I read this, religiously, it seems as if, you know, John has been put aside as greater in terms of importance. And that's what I used to think, that John was more important than every other person born of women. No. When he talks about greater than John the Baptist, he's talking about greater in terms of the purposes. The purposes that are connected to the next statement. In this case, it is when we are talking about men in connection to Christ. John the Baptist became greater because of his closeness to Jesus. John became greater because he's the last prophet of the Old Testament. John wasn't in the New Testament. John the Baptist was the greatest prophet of the Old Testament order. He becomes greater than all the prophets because he didn't just speak about Jesus. He saw Jesus. So he says, of all born of women, there has not risen a greater than John in terms of purpose. Notwithstanding, somebody needs to say hallelujah here. He says, he that is the least <laughs> in the kingdom of heaven is greater than John the Baptist. Greater than John who baptized Jesus. How is this even possible? First of all, there's a lot of meaning in the scripture. Let me say it this way. That our greatness is measured at our birth. Mm. It is not measured by our works. It is measured by our birth. Mm. Great men become great because they were born for something great. They are not great because they are doing something great. They are great because they were born for something great. John the Baptist is being, his greatness is being measured because he's the one prophet who baptized Jesus. He was born to be the Baptist. Isaiah was born to be the one that prophesies about the one coming. But John doesn't prophesy about Jesus. John baptizes Jesus. And he becomes greater than all the other prophets because he was born for this. So your greatness is at birth. Number two, your greatness is also according to what the kingdom wants to do through you. <laughs> I thought you heard what I just said. That's why he said, notwithstanding, the least in the kingdom. So watch this. It means that the least in the kingdom is not born of women. You will catch it next year. Catch it now. Come on now. What makes me greater than John the Baptist is because at birth he is being measured of them born of women. But I'm not being measured by them born of women. I'm being measured by those born into the kingdom of God. So when a man is born into the kingdom, he already is greater than anybody that is born of women. So my greatness has already been measured at my birth into the kingdom of God. When a man is born again, he has already become more important than anybody that's not born again. When a man is born into the kingdom, the purposes he will achieve in that kingdom have already set him apart from men without purpose. Or oh, watch this, men who are carrying purposes after the order of them born after women. For example, Cassidia. You see, when a man is born after a woman and you're the firstborn, then you have the purpose of carrying forward the birthright of the woman. Did you hear me? When you are born as the firstborn, you now have the purpose of leading your family as the firstborn. Yet, the, the, the Bible talks about a certain order of Jacob and Esau. Okay? Give me my scripture. The Bible says when Jacob and Esau were being born, he says the younger shall be served by the older. He puts it this way. He says the older shall serve the younger. So if you're looking at a birth from women, Esau is greater than Jacob. But if you're looking at birth into purpose, 
Jacob is greater than Esau. I don't know if you're flowing with me. So the greatness at birth is now not being measured by your number according to how you were born of women. It's being measured by how you were born into purpose. The Bible says in Genesis 25 and 23, And the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb. Two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And he says, And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. Let's remove stronger and put greater. The one people shall be greater than the other people. And the elder shall serve the younger. So it is only in the kingdom where God flips the things. It's in the kingdom where the last born can become the prophet of the first born. It's in the kingdom of God where your daughter can become your pastor. It's only in the hey God help me here. It's only in the kingdom of God where the girl can become a priest <laughs> over men who are male. It's only in the kingdom of God because it's not an order after birth. It is now an order after purpose. Write this down. I don't live according to the order of birth. I live according to the order of purpose. And this is why I'm calling on you now in the name of Jesus. Maybe you're not the favorite in your family. Maybe you're not the one who has always been called. But I'm here to give you a prophetic word. When you start to walk in your purposes, your rightful position, hell as over, will begin to manifest. The Bible says it causes the foolish things of this world to shame the wise. The Bible says, and the last shall become the first. Why? Because purpose is what determines kingdom position. I said purpose is what determines kingdom position. It's the only way that now it's not about age. It's now about purpose. Take me back. I'm, in, I'm at 11.11 of the book of Matthew. 11.11. Among them that are born of women. Oh, somebody celebrate. There has not risen a greater than John the Baptist. But notwithstanding he that is the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Can I push it far? Why are you greater than John the Baptist? You're greater than John the Baptist because your purposes excel his. Oh, my God. Your purposes in the kingdom excel those of John the Baptist. John's job was to reveal Christ. Your job is to represent Christ. Did you even hear what I just said? John the Baptist was born to reveal. He says, now behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the earth. That's what John said. When it comes to you, Kasuba, you have been born to represent the one that John was born to reveal. In another way, when Jesus went and you showed up, if John was still alive in your day, you would be baptized. <laughs> you didn't hear what I just said. John would baptize you if Jesus had left after you had gotten born again. Why? Because one is in the order of revealing the other is in the order of representing. So this, in the kingdom of God, makes you greater than John the Baptist. I hope you still see me. Huh. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I need you to say this after me. Say this after me. Say, in this season, I will walk in the greatness of my purpose. Say it again. Say, in this season, I will walk in the greatness of my purpose. I can't hear faith. Come on, say, in this season, I will walk in the greatness of my purpose. Verse number 12. I still have three points to make. Look at what he says. Verse 12. <laughs> and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. Another version says, and from the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God is forcefully advancing, and forceful men are taking a hold of it. What did Jesus mean by this? He is saying that, that every purpose, every purpose, 
If you're going to walk in a purpose, you must understand the forceful advancement towards that purpose. Hmm. I'll say it the second time. That if you're going to walk in purpose, you must understand the forceful advancement on that purpose. So this is what he's saying. That before John the Baptist, from the days of John the Baptist, until now, now that now is the time of Jesus. Until the time of Jesus, the kingdom of God was forcefully advancing. The kingdom of God did not just appear, you know, on a silver platter. He says it suffered violence. Okay, so there was a contrary force that was pressing against the kingdom so that it doesn't come. But it had to come. And it is only those who understood that the kingdom of God has come that would violently take over what is coming. Watch this now. The purposes God gives are not on a silver platter. He puts it in your spirit, but you must understand that there is a force that causes that purpose to happen. Now, if he says that the kingdom of God suffereth violence or that the kingdom of God is forcefully advancing, it means that it is by the purposes in man that that kingdom forcefully advances. So, every purpose that is given is for the forceful advancement of the kingdom of God. You didn't hear me. So, John the Baptist was forcefully advancing a kingdom. And this kingdom was going to come with the coming Christ. That's why John had many enemies because there was a kingdom he has begun to talk about. But this kingdom is not just going to come with, you know, on a silver platter. This kingdom is going to come through the death of a man. So John the Baptist is forcefully advancing a kingdom and yet you are greater than John the Baptist. That means your purpose will advance the kingdom of of of, of God with more force than John the Baptist advanced his. Now this already means that if John the Baptist decided to go to the wilderness and just pray and seek God and just be there and prepare the way and be a voice then you who is a greater voice, come on now, cannot take purpose easy. You cannot just take purpose lightly. If John who is lesser in terms of purpose had this kind of tenacity with which he preached, then the apostle of the day must shout louder. The prophet of the day must prophesy stronger. The teacher of the day must divide scripture even more seriously because the kingdom of God is forcefully advancing and it is by the purposes that God places upon men that that kingdom advances. And then he says, violent the violent take it by force. Or forceful men take a hold of it. So guess what? My God, I sense the anointing here. I sense the anointing here. So that means that even the ones that are receiving of your purpose can only get it forcefully. They get it because they understand that this is a treasure that must be caught and a hold of, but other people are interested in it. I speak prophetically over you today. I, I sense something here. There is coming a force of purpose in your spirit. Are you there? That God is beginning to give you a force of purpose. A force, a pressing of purpose. Ah, a deliberateness about applying purpose. That you begin to push forward the kingdom because this kingdom is forcefully advancing. And now... You understand that in the day you're living in, the violent in that day took it by force. But the Lord revealed to me that the force by which we advance the kingdom is called faith. We are not talking about human effort. We are talking about a full resolve. And that full resolve is the realm of faith. So you're going to have violent faith. I said you're going to have violent faith that begins to advance the causes of the kingdom of God. That's why I said it's kingdom first. Because if you understand what the kingdom is doing, and you understand 
what the kingdom is going through and you understand the times of that kingdom you will not play with babies so i close with now explaining to you why it's important to understand what's this violent thing that the bible is talking about why must you understand this three ways number one and then we can close i hope you're picking ministry somebody pray in the holy ghost i I, I personally am being blessed by this word. I receive it in my spirit. And I can tell you, I will prop purposes of God in my time in ways that I had never even imagined. Get ready nations, I'm coming. Get ready families, I'm coming. Get ready people, I'm coming. The Lord has shown me that my greatness is in my purpose. And I will live the rest of my days fulfilling that purpose in the name of... I will not rest one day. But I will push purpose with everything that I got. Somebody say glory to God. So let's go. Three things. Number one. The kingdom of God. The purposes of the kingdom of God. What does it mean? It means that we are passing on kingdom realities. Let me try to be a bit fast here. Whenever God gives you a purpose. That purpose is going to be used to introduce the realities of the kingdom of heaven onto the earth. So God never gives you a purpose that doesn't create a reality. God never gives you a purpose that will not introduce a new reality. Men of purpose introduce new realities. That's why the prayer in Matthew chapter number 6 and verse number 9 says, and he turned to his disciples and says, when you pray, pray like this. Or pray after this manner. After this manner, therefore pray ye. Our Father which is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What is he saying? He's saying that whenever a man of purpose prays, he is praying for the realities of the heaven to be introduced on the earth. And this can only be through your purpose. For example, if God blesses you with a supernatural gift of healing or the working of miracles, somebody receive it now. I said somebody receive it now. It means that to the sick, you will introduce a heavenly reality called divine health. That when you minister, men who are under the natural order of sickness and disease will be transported into a new reality called divine health. Where it is not medicine that has healed them, but a new reality. When you are being anointed with the ability to cast out devils, and that's for every believer. <laughs> oh, I pray for you. Let me tell you, any devil in your vicinity. There will be a radar in your heart that will immediately know this is the devil. And you will cast out devils. Mark chapter number 16. I said you will cast out devils. It says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. Can somebody say, I receive that. Come on, say, I receive that. He says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they will cast out devils. Hallelujah, somebody. They will cast out devils. So that means, uh, you know, he says, these signs shall follow them, but in my name they will cast out. That means that there's a reality that your purpose will introduce. That when it comes to demons, you introduce a reality that casts out devils. You remember what the Bible says? Jesus says, if I cast out devils, by the Spirit of God, <laughs> then the kingdom of God is come unto you. So when Jesus came, yeah, when Jesus showed up where there was a need for the casting out of devils, he didn't say, you devil, I rebuke you. Well, when Jesus came, he introduced kingdom reality. And when the kingdom came, have you seen that? The kingdom of God is come unto you. When the kingdom comes, devils have to leave. I have people who say, you know what? I'm, 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 me, I'm in the purposes of God. I ask them, how are you in kingdom purpose? Well, um, um, 
I sing in the choir. Now, singing in the choir, we are going to teach, is ministry service. But the first reason why purposes are given is not to be engaged in ministry service. The reason why you are given purpose is to introduce a kingdom reality. So, you must outgrow service into spiritual gifting so that there is a reality introduced not just through service because service doesn't introduce reality. What, in fact, service is our share of reality. That I believe certain things about God so I can share. I can serve the church because of what I believe about God. Did you hear me? So ministry service is a man who is full of this reality, serving the people. However, to introduce a new reality, I, must, I can only do it through spiritual gifting. So now I must grow from just arranging chairs, are you there, to prophecy. Because now prophecy is a whole different realm. Prophecy is when I can speak to the person who will sit on that chair. And I say as an usher, as a man of protocol, if anybody sits on this chair with a sickness, that sickness is going to be healed. Because now you're moving into the first reason why purposes are given. I have to run. Purposes are initially given so that the kingdom realities might be introduced on the earth. I have lived long enough to understand that there are people who say they are in service but yet they have not yet introduced any reality. Can I pray for you now? I pray that from today, mm, mm, men will know you by the realities you introduce. People who have never had healing will understand it through your ministry. People that have never had revelation will understand the what is the wisdom of God. Well, you will introduce that answer to men around you. They will understand that the wisdom of God is not knowledge. The wisdom of God is a man operating in the purposes of God. You will know things that were never taught in university. You will introduce new realities on the earth. Somebody say glory to God. My time is gone. But quickly, what I can say about realities is that the kingdom of God primarily is a spiritual reality. So that means that purposes are given not just for natural administrative order, but the purposes of the kingdom are given so that men may understand the spiritual reality. So guess what? Guess what? Look here now. That purposes introduce the man of the spirit. <laughs> purposes introduce the realm of the spirit. Purposes are not God using man. Purposes are man becoming spirit. Kingdom purposes don't leave you as protocol. Kingdom purposes turn you into a man of the spirit. That's why we must learn about walking in. Because when I walk in kingdom purposes, I flip. Now I live in the realm of the spirit. I know this is deeper than you thought. Walking in kingdom purposes is introducing the spiritual realm. Luke 17, 20 says, when he was demanded of the Pharisees, saying, when will the kingdom of God come? He told them that the kingdom of God, come on, does it come by? Observation. You don't say there it is or here it is. Okay? For the kingdom of God is within you. That's what he says. For the kingdom of God is within you. Now, to walk in kingdom purposes is to bring out that kingdom. The kingdom that is within. The realities that are within. You begin to give them out to people. We serve out realities. We don't serve out services. We serve out realities. Did you hear me? Purposes serve out realities. Purposes serve out realities. We don't serve out money. We don't serve out, you hear me? What I'm giving you now is, we don't serve out words. We don't serve out appearances. We serve out realities. In fact, if you hear me and you don't hear a new reality, stop listening to me. Yeah, when you listen to somebody, they must be able to feed you with a reality you didn't even know existed. 
You must be able to say, oh my God, I didn't even know that. Because this is why we were born. We were born to teach the world what the heavens are like. You know what? God is going to give you. Because I can see some of you, you're saying, I want it, I want it. How can I do it? Listen, God is going to give you a tour of the heavens. Mm. Some of this prophecy really gets into my spirit. God is going to give you a tour of heavenly realities. Until you are so full of these realities, you can't wait to serve them to people. Can I hear somebody? Some of you, the reality God is going to give you is called life. 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 The new reality called life. You know how the Bible says the, the, the just shall live by faith? Listen, that is not going to be a scripture for you. It's going to be a reality. So you will go out and teach men this thing called the life of faith. Because it's a reality in your spirit. So we advance life. We advance light. We advance hope. We advance peace. We advance joy. We advance righteousness. We advance the realities of the kingdom. This is what our purposes do. Our purposes take us to the place where men who didn't know what realities are begin to say, oh my God, I should have tapped into that joy a long time ago. I should have tapped into that peace a long time ago. And you are going to be the vessel. Ba, 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 ba. To serve is not to mop the church. It's not to do the deco for the house. No, it's more than that. It's to bring a heavenly reality onto the earth. My God, how much time have I taken? Because I can't go into number two and number three. My cassette de beleke. I release you now in the name of Jesus to the place of heavenly realities. Help me guys on the media. Give me a signal. I said I release you into the place of heavenly realities. I release you into the place of heavenly realities. I don't want this to go more than an hour. I release you into a place of that the God who began this work in you will begin to fill your heart with heavenly realities in the mighty name of Jesus. Listen, we pass on realities, not assumptions. We pass on realities, not hopes and dreams. We pass on realities, not, you know what? One day, one day God will come through for you. No, we tell you God is coming through for you today. We pass on what is real to us. And our purposes are the vehicle that transport our realities. Did you hear me? My purpose is the vehicle that transports the kingdom realities onto the earth. And I release you into that place in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say, praise the Lord. I said, somebody say, praise the Lord. Something is about to happen in your spirit. I'm praying for you now. God is going to lead you to a place of purpose that advertises realities. Purpose that advertises realities realities I pray for you now in the name of Jesus listen I have two more points I told you that the kingdom purposes move by kingdom reality kingdom agenda and kingdom times but I can't go to those two today we'll pick up from this on Wednesday in our Bible study so don't miss that but today let me focus on kingdom reality I release you to a place where God causes your purposes to reflect his realities. My, 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 my. Oh, I feel it in my spirit. I said, may God usher you to the place where your purpose, your purpose introduces kingdom realities on the earth in the name of Jesus. You who was in ministry service, get ready. Your service leads you to ministry gifts. And your gifts lead you to ministry offices. And your offices will be used to introduce the realities of the kingdom. Listen, God doesn't call you to preach him. God calls you to represent him. Mama, mama. So God doesn't just call you to quote what he said. God calls you so that men understand what this life is really about through you. In the name of Jesus, I release the nine spiritual gifts over you. But may each gift 
represent a reality that you will introduce in the name of Jesus come on you receive word of knowledge you know what that is you this is the knowledge that is coming from that reality to expose a new reality you receive word of wisdom you receive the discernment of spirits you receive faith you receive the working of miracles you receive it I can hear you you receive the gift of healing you receive the speaking in other tongues and the interpretation of the tongues. You receive prophecy and by these gifts, are you here somebody? You will introduce kingdom realities on the earth in the name of Jesus. You see, John the Baptist was great because he didn't talk about a reality. He revealed the new reality called Christ. Oh, glory to God. I said glory to God. Listen, you will not talk about Christ. You will represent him. You will echo someday. The same way John showed him to them in the flesh. You will be in the flesh. What John was revealing. In Jesus mighty name that revealed Christ. The Lord showed me that there are three realities. Let me look for them here. That we are going to represent. Makalesi, pray in the spirit. Come on now. Pray in the spirit, somebody. Liko so telebeha. Mante li kulu zitike debaha. Limbri da zitike yade. Pray in the spirit. I want to give this to you. Likulu bridi zitike. The Lord told me that there are three realities we are going to represent. I have them here, so I'm getting them for you. Liku zuntelebe. Number one, he says you will represent the reality of the revealed Christ. You will represent the reality of the revealed Christ. That's the reality you will represent. Number two, you will represent the reality of the New Testament. You will represent the reality of the New Testament. That's why he says he has made us able ministers of the New Testament. Not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. Guess what? You will represent the realities of the Spirit. It's called the realities of the New Testament. It is the reality. Everything that is of Spirit will be revealed through your purposes. To walk in kingdom purposes is to walk in the realm of the New Testament. So I release you now to reveal these things in Jesus' mighty name. Number three, born to reveal the realities of the kingdom of God. Whatever the kingdom represents, our purposes are here to make them available. Have you got those three? The realities of the kingdom, the realities of the revealed Christ, and the realities of the New Testament. I'm praying for a woman watching today. You said, you know what? I don't know. I don't know if God can use me really. I look at myself. I look at where I came from. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if God can use me. Well, I came as a voice of confirmation. Because you're watching this is proof already that God is setting you up to use you in this day in ways you have never imagined. Yes, that lady that is watching here, can I speak to you? God is going to reveal his realities through you in ways you have never imagined. In fact, he will pour on you a prophetic mantle. I'm talking to you. That when you speak words, your words will be of a different reality. Men will recognize Christ. Men will recognize the ministry of the New Testament. Men will recognize the kingdom because of the word that began to come out of you. The walking in kingdom purposes is walking to reveal kingdom reality. I pray for that. That hey, I, saw the, I saw somebody. I saw somebody in the spirit. I saw somebody that has been praying. You've served God a long time, but you've never been fulfilled. The Lord is saying, fulfillment comes when you serve with revelation. Fulfillment comes when you serve with revelation. God is speaking to you now in the name of Jesus. That your purpose begins to bring fulfillment in your life. You see that word fulfillment is really talking about a man living to the full of what he was filled with. Oh God, 
what you were filled with is the purposes of God. Now you're going to live out to the full those purposes that were filled in you. That's what fulfillment will mean to you from today. There is nothing the Lord caused you to purpose out that will not be achieved. The last prayer I have for the people watching us, watch this now. God says the same way the Bible says of those born of women, there has never been any greater than John the Baptist. Your story changes today. The Lord says you begin to recognize why you were born. The greatness of your birth begins to be spoken about. The greatness of your birth begins to be advertised. The greatness of your birth begins to be revealed through the purposes that God has for you. Come on, lift your hands right now. Our service is done. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Say, Lord, I will leave for your purposes. Come on, pray. Tell him, tell him, Lord, I will serve your purposes. Lord, I recognize your purposes in my life. Lord, I will be a student of your purposes. Lord, I will pursue them. I forget the things that are behind me. And I press forward for your purposes in my life. Come on, pray in the Spirit. Kali Zuprida. Mikusuntibri Gazantila ghost keto lombrekula haside hey pray in the spirit the lord says to you in the name of jesus that he will elevate you from the dung hill he will elevate you from the dust he will elevate you from the places of being ignored listen he says i place you in places of honor and responsibility why because there is a purpose over your life Men will come to see you like they came to see John the Baptist. And I'm talking about men of great importance. Your words will be sought after by great men in the name of Jesus. Your purpose will place you in platforms you never, ever, ever imagine. You will even step in in the name of Jesus. It is an honor to serve the Lord. It is an honor to walk in His purposes. It is an honor to reveal these things unto man. I release you now in the name of the Father. I release you now in the name of the Son. And I release you now in the name of the Holy Ghost. You walk in your kingdom purposes in Jesus' mighty name. Listen, we have to go off air. But I want you to continue to pray in the Spirit. And on Wednesday, don't miss Wednesday, I'm going to teach you how to walk in your kingdom purposes. I will use Wednesday for the practical teaching, but I will use Sundays for the prophetic teaching. Is that okay? I will use the Sundays for prophetic teaching. The guys on the media, please keep reminding me about this. I will use, I will use Sunday for prophetic teaching, but I will use the Wednesday for the practical. The how, the how. But today I came to tell you the what. Okay, and this word is about understanding what it means to walk in kingdom purposes. May the Lord bless you. May he cause his face to shine on you. And may he grant you peace forever in Jesus' mighty name. Now go ahead and use the numbers on your screen to give your Sunday offering. Or your word offering. Because maybe you're watching this and it's not a Sunday. Listen, let's be the men that give to the work of God. I pray for your finances now in the name of Jesus. May God use your money to advance the kingdom of God. May he bless you so much. Come on now. Agree with this preacher. May God bless you so much that the kingdom of God will rejoice at how much it is being advanced through your finances. Maybe you were born as a kingdom financer. I'm looking for you. Where are my kingdom finances? You were born to make sure that there is no kingdom need that you can facilitate, that you will just watch and leave it to be there. But God will use you greatly. There was a man in the Bible, in the book of Acts, he says that his giving and his prayers came up to God as a memorial. There are people that give until their giving becomes a memorial in the heavens. I pray for you that you will be a kingdom supporter. You will support the kingdom with your finances. This month, our offering is strictly going towards kingdom advancement. Give your best. Those who are giving your tithe, give with one heart. Partnership, give with one heart. Offering, give with one heart. First fruits, give with one heart. Knowing that I was born for this. I was, hey, master, how many people want to be rich in this day? How many people are saying, I want the kingdom of God to bless me so that I can bless the kingdom? Open your hands and let me speak a blessing over you. 
God, in the name of Jesus, you see these hands. I pray that you will supernaturally, like you did it in Macedonia, like you did it for the men that facilitated Paul's missionary journeys. I'm praying now in the name of Jesus that my God will supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I pray that there will be no need in your house that shall not be met because you have met the need of the kingdom. I pray that there will be money you haven't counted before coming into your accounts because you have been faithful in supporting the kingdom of God. Receive that blessing and begin to expect it to manifest in Jesus' name. Come on now. You are blessed and you are highly favored. I want to thank you all for joining us today. Please like this video if it has been a blessing to you. Subscribe to our channel if you've not already done that. And listen, please do this. Share this message with somebody you believe needs to hear it about kingdom purpose. Let's preach together. Let's spread the word together. My name is Apostle Joshua. I love you as always. And we'll be back on Wednesday with more empowering word right here at the Kingdom Tabernacle where we preach strictly good news. God bless you and God prosper you in Jesus' mighty name. The kingdom of God does not benefit you physically until you have discovered it spiritually. In fact, your level of discovery in the spirit determines your fruit in the physical. So Jesus says that the first mystery that people didn't understand was the mystery of the coming kingdom. They kept waiting for a kingdom that had already come. When Jesus came, He's saying the time is fulfilled. Come on now. And the kingdom of God is at hand. So repent and believe the gospel.